Well, with regard to a moment of silence, the background is that the Supreme Court made clear back in the 1960s, really, or even earlier, that prayer, organized prayer in a public school was not permissible. It was a violation of the First Amendment. The First Amendment says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. There are two parts to that First Amendment, to that language in the First Amendment. One, you can't have an establishment, and two, you can't be interfered with in the free exercise of religion. The court held that when public school students who are impressionable, young kids, when they are told by a teacher, they're led in a prayer, even if they're told they can be excused, and in many of these cases, the parents who did not want them to participate in the prayer told the children to leave the room, ask to be excused, because the prayer might be Christian or might be in some way contrary to the student's belief, particularly if the student was Jewish, and ordinarily public school prayers may invoke God in a way that's not Jewish. Uh, even if they're excused, that it is unconstitutional to have the teacher lead in a prayer. Now, what about not actually leading in the prayer, but just having a moment of silence? Well, the courts have, at least in the reported Supreme Court cases, have cast some doubt even on moments of silence if they are generated by an attempt to make the student be religious, essentially. Even though it's silent, nonetheless, and there's no prayer recited, nonetheless, it might be an endorsement of religion or an establishment of religion. So that's the question. Back when I clerked on the Supreme Court of the United States in 1962, the Supreme Court had before it the case of the New York State Regents Prayer, which was a non-denominational prayer, essentially 21, I think 21 word prayer, which just was thanks to Almighty God. And the uh, court was faced with the question of whether that was a constitutional uh, law that sort of said that students at the beginning of the public school day would recite the New York State Regents Prayer, which New York State really composed. The legislators in New York composed what they thought was a non-denominational prayer that students should be expected to recite unless they wanted to be excused and they were told they could be excused. Nonetheless, in a decision issued in 1962, the Supreme Court said no. It's unconstitutional because the state has no business writing a prayer or even sort of suggesting that such a prayer be recited in schools. Now, I have to say that at that time, the entire Jewish communal world, all the Jewish organizations, including, I have to tell you, even Orthodox organizations, agreed with the Supreme Court majority. It was not a unanimous decision, but nonetheless the majority said it was unconstitutional. And they agreed because they felt it would harm Jewish interests to have a prayer that would be recited by students in a public school. And that Jewish students, there was then a fear that Jewish students might end up being proselytized, might end up being persuaded that they should abandon Judaism and maybe become Christian. The one voice, and I recall there was only one voice in the Orthodox community that spoke up in favor of the New York State Regents Prayer, and that was the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He, at that point, when the case was decided, he issued a public statement which said that in his view the court was wrong, that it was desirable for all students to be encouraged to recognize God and to recognize in a prayer 
even if it's a non-denominational prayer and it has no Jewish content, to re uh, uh, recognize divinity of God. And the Lubavitcher Rebbe wrote such a letter and he distributed it. And I, at the time, I was a young Jewish liberal. I thought, well, this is not a view that I could accept. Many years later, I came around to the view that that was correct. And in fact, I submitted the Lubavitcher Rebbe's letter opposing the unconstitutionality of the New York uh, Regents Prayer and saying it should be recited and was constitutional, I submitted it in a brief into the Supreme Court as, as an attachment to the brief to show that prayers can be supported by non-Christian groups. And it was submitted to the court. And in that case, although the court did not specifically cite the letter of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the court did agree that that prayer could be recited. That was not, it was not a specific prayer. It was that somebody could be called upon to recite a prayer at the beginning of public meetings. That was a decision that referred to meetings of local uh, governmental bodies, a local city council, for example, and that a, a prayer, they would call on somebody to recite a prayer. And I said in the brief that that was constitutional because that was not a violation of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. To take first the question of a moment of silence, I think it clearly should not be unconstitutional to have a moment of silence. With regard to a prayer, obviously it depends on the prayer. The New York State Regents prayer was so uh, neutral that I suppose my view today is it is probably a good idea to have a state prayer which students who could be excused if they wanted to be excused or the parents wanted them to be excused, but I think that students could and should recite, yes. I think that we are no longer at a time in our status in the United States and we're no longer at a time with regard to religion in the United States that it should be an offense or wrong to be, to say I believe in God. I think it's useful and it was consistent with those who drafted the First Amendment to say that they were believers in God. 